It's Sister Talk with Veronica Nisha. You are listening to Sister Talk. It's Sister Talk with Veronica Nisha. You are listening to Sister Talk. Welcome to Sister Talk. Um, This is something new that um, I am doing along with my sister, Misha. She also has a YouTube channel as well. Um, I'm going to get her to kind of introduce herself. If you guys, I know some of you know her, some of you don't. Um, But I wanted to first say that this is our first show. Um, The Lord really was speaking to the both of us um, as far as doing something like this. And the timing is just perfect for the both of us. And we're very excited about launching our first show. The topic of conversation that we're going to be discussing is why we should forgive. And um, what brought this on is my sister Misha had did a video. Um, a few days ago, a very powerful video on the topic. So before we jump into this, I'm going to let my sister Misha um, introduce herself and just kind of give you a little bit about her. So Misha, go right ahead. Hello, my name is Misha, and some of you do know me from my channel, Misha Nays Connected to the Vine, where I share my dreams and visions. And I am so happy to be included in this blessed program with my sister, Veronica. And um, I, I really hope that what we speak about blesses you all today and helps you with your road to forgiveness or whatever it is that you're struggling with. Thanks, sis. Amen. So, like I said, um, my sister Misha basically um, had did a video a few days ago, very powerful. The reason why we came up with Sister Talk is, you know, we talk a lot over the phone. Uh, We've been knowing each other for a little over two years now, and it's just been a blessing as far as how God brought us together. Mm -hmm. And we always would say, you know, wow, you know, if people could just hear the conversations we have over the phone, because you guys, when I tell you the Lord be in the midst of our conversations, like it is so amazing how much revelation, how much insight and wisdom that is just poured out over our our conversations. Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that this is the Lord's um, doing, you know, him bringing this together because I know I, a lot of times when I get off the phone with her, I'm so full, you know, I feel so full of encouragement and strength. And um, again, you know, it's always been where, you know, when we talk to each other, you know, the Lord is there. And we just thought that it would be such a blessing and just a good idea in general to bring to you some of our conversations that we have um, on a one-on-one basis. So as my Misha, uh, sister Misha said, you know, we truly hope that the content that we bring forth will be a blessing to you all in your spiritual walk, because that's really what it's all about. We're to empower each other, strengthen each other, um, encourage each other, build each other up, because, you know, it does get hard, and it helps when you have someone of like mind that mm-hmm. is really important and helping you you know, to get to that finish line. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as mentioned before, my sister Misha did a YouTube video a few days ago on the topic of forgiveness. Misha, can you tell us what pricked your heart in feeling led to uh, do that video on forgiveness? Absolutely. I was sitting one day and the Lord just started speaking to me about making a video on forgiveness and as usual when the lord speaks to me i want to have that confirmation to know that it's him telling me to do a video so i sat and waited and the lord kept nudging me to make the video so i prayed and i asked the lord well lord if you really want me to make this video then you please speak 
and you, know, you speak through me, use me as a vessel to say what you want to say. And so when I started recording the video, the Lord took over from there. Amen. What message would you say resonated with you? Because I know sometimes for me, you know, when I'm doing a, a YouTube video and I'm speaking, and I know it's not me fully speaking, um, but it's the Holy Spirit within me. When you listen back to it, what was it that really grabbed hold of you the most? What grabbed hold of me the most when listening to the video was, it was the bitterness that the, the children of God deal with. Because mm -hmm. when we're in the world, you know, we, we only know how to be in the world. But once you are saved, the Lord starts dealing with your heart and he starts to break up that hard ground inside of your heart. And so that's what resonated with me more than anything is the bitterness that some deal with being a child of God. Because some people assume just because you're saved that you don't have any more problems, that there's nothing else that you're dealing with. But a lot of times when we come to the Lord, we have to give ourselves over to him and submit so that he's able to do that work in us to get us to where he wants us to be. Amen. And, you know, you spoke on bitterness and, you know, it's very interesting that I can still remember this to, you know, as if this happened yesterday, but there was a, a girl that I used to be, you know, friends with a long, long time ago. It's been many years ago. And, you know, things kind of happened to where the Lord just began to separate us. And I remember I had a dream about her. And in the dream, I saw her at a table. And, you know, different people were eating food, but she was putting slimy stuff inside of her mouth like she was just picking it up and eating it and i remember out in the dream i was asking the question to myself what is that and the lord told me in the dream that was bitterness mm -hmm. that she had partake of and so i completely agree with you that you know that bitterness can seep in so easy if we're not careful and that's why it's so important to forgive because I know we were talking yesterday, I believe, and you said something very powerful, but so simple at the same time. You know, forgiveness is not for us. It's for the other person. Why do you believe that? Well, I do believe that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Misha. I completely said that backwards. <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> Forgiveness is not so much for the other person, but it's more for us. Can you expound on that? Yes, I do believe, you know, when I was going through what I was going through with people that had done me just so completely wrong, when I hadn't done anything to them, I didn't understand why the Lord wanted me to forgive them when they were the ones that wronged me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord began to deal with my heart to say, it is affecting the way I am able to, to dwell inside of you because God is love. And so he began to show me that the love of God was not able to freely flow through me with me having bitterness, hatred, revenge inside of me. And so I started to understand that. And I also started to understand that it affected me in a way to where the, everybody who was around me was affected by my bitterness. Mm -hmm. I was taking, that, taking it out on people that were around me who didn't deserve the things that I was saying, the attitude that I had. And so it took me a while to understand that me holding on to unforgiveness was affecting me. It was making me an ugly person. It was making me horrible in the inside. And so when the Lord began to deal with me and he started to break up that hard ground, that bitterness and uproot it out of me, then I was able to feel the love of God dwell inside of me in my belly. And I was able to love people. I was able to love my husband right. I was able to love myself right. I was able to be able to forgive others the way the Lord wanted me to forgive. Amen. And, you know, that's, that's so important because, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to become more like Christ. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I know for me personally, I've been in many situations that have been so hard 
you know, where people have said untruths about me, where they're attacking my character, you know, you know, my reputation, you know, and, you know, when you have people like that, that, that does those things is very hurtful and you don't understand it when you're in that moment. And, you know, a lot of times your flesh wants to react, you know, but it's like the Lord, you know, teaches us to remain humble, even in those situations. And, you know, it's teaching us, you know, so much when we go through things like that, because you're teaching your flesh to submit to the Holy Spirit. Because again, our flesh always wants to retaliate. And as you said, you know, earlier, you know, our flesh naturally wants to have revenge on those who hurt us. But we're always supposed to um, display love no matter what. And so a lot of times when you're in those type of situations, we have to totally rely on Christ because the forgiveness is not coming from our flesh. The forgiveness is coming from the Holy Spirit from within. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit within you, it is impossible for you to forgive others. That's just real talk. And I know for me, you know, there's been a lot of situations that I've been in where I'm like, Lord, you're really going to have to give me forgiveness for this person because I don't know how to forgive. And so when you can be real in those moments, God can really, you know, work with you and help you in those areas because he knows that these type of situations are not easy. And I know you have said, you know, in a conversation we had yesterday that, you know, that's why, you know, the Lord tells us that we are to forgive 70 times 7 because it is only through the Holy Spirit within us that we are able to do that. Do you mm -hmm. agree? And I completely agree with that because, you know, you don't really understand your flesh until you're saved and you get to that point to where you have to battle your flesh. Mm -hmm. and, and then you understand how the Lord is the searcher of the heart. And he will show you who you are, you know, and I think typically people generally think of themselves as being a good person, but it's not until you hurt to where you can see the aggressiveness of the flesh, how evil your flesh is, when you can think evil of a person, when you want revenge on that person for doing what they did to you. And it's the Lord that has to show you your heart to show you that, wow, your flesh, that there's nothing good in your flesh. And, there, and it's a reason why the Lord brings you to a point to where, you have, where you're able to see your heart, see your flesh, and you have to battle with it and you have to deny it. And so I, I understand that when it comes to dealing with the hurt, the pain, the Lord allows these things because there's something that he wants to show you about yourself, about your flesh. And more than anything, as you just stated, that you have to rely on the Lord for everything, even in something that seems so small as forgiveness, which when you're trying to do give forgiveness to a person who has really hurt you is not such a small thing. And as Sister Veronica stated, you really need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to rise up in you and forgive the way that the Lord instructs you to forgive. Amen. And you know, um, I wish we could have played that video on here, but um, you also stated in that video as well that it's one thing to forgive, you know, someone who hurt you um, and they never came to you and, and express, you know, or, or take an account for what they did. Um, but yet, even if someone who's, who offended you or hurt you or spoken untruths about you, even if they never admit to it or own up to it, you still have to forgive that person. Yeah. But you said in that video that it's more to it than that, that if you have offended someone, you should also go to that person and say that I'm sorry. Why do you feel that it shouldn't just be, okay, well, I went to the Lord and I asked for forgiveness. Why do you feel that that person should take it a step further and go to the person that they hurt or offended and just apologize as well? Speaking from personal experience, I have been the person that has been hurt when people may have misunderstood me or for whatever reason. And 
you know, I would believe that maybe the Lord would convict that person to apologize to me, but it never happened. And it, it really made me have to struggle with forgiveness on a whole other level than I would have had to, to if they were to just apologize. And so I went through a lot of painful nights, sleepless nights, a lot of anger and trying so hard, seeking God, Lord, help me find forgiveness. And so for me, I understood that it was needed for me to apologize to those that I have wronged because I don't want them to have to struggle with that. And I do feel that so many people are sensitive. And a lot of times when we do things to people, we never know how much we're hurting that person. Mm -hmm. We don't know how fragile their mindset is, what they had to go through just because I didn't say I'm sorry for what I've done. So I know the Lord touched my heart when he saved me to go to those people that you wrong and apologize, release them, mm. let those people and help them to release you. And so that's why I believe that it's so important for us to say that I'm sorry as children of God, because if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, then he'll convict you to say that I'm sorry when you were wrong. And I believe that sometimes we can have so much pride inside of us that we know we should say I'm sorry. We know when we're wrong, but we don't correct it out of pride. And as the Lord explained to me, when you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit. And so I, this is the reason why I believe it's so important for us as Christians to say, I'm sorry, humble yourself and say that I'm sorry to him, whoever you may have wronged. Amen. And, you know, I'm so glad that you pointed that out because, you know, it's true. You know, we all come from different backgrounds. We've all have had different experiences, you know, throughout life. And we never know the, the state of mind a person is in. You know, we see suicide on, on, on a rise, you know, and people are so fragile to the point where, you know, something that you may be strong enough to deal with, others may not be that strong. And so just, you know, going through a situation where someone is being, you know, mistreated or abused or, you know, lied on, you know, you don't know all the things that that person has encountered throughout their life to the point where that one episode could have been the final straw to where they just mm -hmm. break down, you know. So we have to be very, very mindful of how we treat people. And yeah, sometimes you can offend people and not even realize you offended them. But if they come to you and they say, look, you know, this offended me or, you know, you said this or you said that that hurt my feelings, we shouldn't just, yeah. you know, brush it off and just say whatever. We should at least take the time out to acknowledge it and say, you know what, that wasn't my intent. I apologize. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all supposed to be working towards remaining clean, remaining without spot or blemish. You know, we're trying to resemble and mirror Christ in all things because this walk is a lifestyle. I say this all the time because it's true. You know, it's more to it than what you say. It's your lifestyle. It's how you carry out what you're speaking. And so we have to always make sure that we're keeping ourselves in check, you know, because this is a process. You know, we're all learning how to be Christians because I don't know about you guys, but I'm not just trying to call myself a Christian and live like the world. Mm -hmm. I really want to make sure that when I say that I'm a follower of Christ, that I'm actually exemplifying that. And so, you know, I think that this topic of conversation is so important because so many people have been hurt and they don't know how to forgive. Um, Misha, what would you say? to someone who may say, okay, you know, this all sounds good, but you guys don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know what has happened to me. How can I possibly forgive this individual for hurting me? You know, how, how can that person take what we're saying and, and truly believe it and live it and be free? I will say this, that um, the Bible says that only the pure in heart shall see God. 
And so there are certain things that we have to understand as Christians that we have to, we have to yield to the Holy Spirit. We have to yield to the Lord. And forgiveness is not only for that person. Forgiveness is also for you. If you ever look inside of yourself, the emotions that and the anger that it brings out of you when you have that unforgiveness, the hurt and pain. See, the Lord wants to heal you because it's bigger than one situation. There's many instances where we have been hurt, where people have done things to us that were just, you know, unspeakable. But I say to you, the Lord wants to heal you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. The Lord wants to heal you everywhere. So when it comes to forgiveness, always remember that it's not only about the person, that it is for you as well. Amen. And you know, one of the things that I've spoken often, because it was revelation that the Lord gave me a long time ago, and it is the reason why forgiveness is so important because we are we have to be mindful that the person that's doing the you know the hurting they don't fully understand you know what they're doing Mm -hmm. because spiritually we're all being led by either the spirit of god or the spirit of satan Mm -hmm. you know the bible is very clear that there is a separation between the children of light and the children of darkness. And if you are not following Christ, then that means your spirit man is being led by Satan. And so a lot of times people don't understand that they have opened themselves up to be used by the enemy. And so when you can have the mindset that It is not this person that's doing the hurting. It's the spirit that's operating within them that's attacking me. Then you can understand why God said, love your enemies. Because in the natural state of mind, it's impossible to know or even understand how am I supposed to love someone who is hurting me. But it's because, as my sister Misha had mentioned when we was having a a conversation, You know, she was saying that um, when you look at how on the cross, Christ said, forgive them for they know not what they do. It was because he had that understanding that they really don't know what they're doing because they don't understand that they have opened themselves up for the enemy to use them as a vessel. And see, that's the thing. We as human beings, we are vessels. We can either be used by God or we can be used by Satan. And so when you have that understanding, you can go into these situations, not saying that it's still going to be easy, because it's still going to be difficult, you know, going through these things. But at least you will have the understanding knowing, okay, I can separate this individual, the one who I see physically doing the attack, but I can also see the spirit operating within this person. So when you have that mindset, you can direct your anger correctly. You don't show anger or hate towards the person that you physically see. You show anger towards the spirit that's operating within them to attack you. And see, I I believe for me, that, that is what has helped me to remain humble and soft-hearted towards people because there are many people who have you know hurt me in some kind of way and I still pray for them and it's not like a pray like you know I hope all these things happen no that's not praying the way we're supposed to I'm talking about praying for the Lord to heal them praying for the Lord to you know bless them to show them so they you know, will understand where they went wrong, praying for, you know, just for the Lord to truly do a work in them as if I was praying for myself. And we have to always demonstrate that love, no matter what, regardless of the situation, regardless of the hurt or, you know, just the abuse that we're experiencing. Um, So Sister Misha, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts and feelings on that? 
Well, that you mentioned is so beautiful and it's so true when it um, comes to learning how to forgive through prayer, praying for people, because sometimes the Lord will expose to you that a lot of times people that hurt you are people that have been hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we need to pray for the people that hurt us because they may not have anyone else praying for them, number one. And second, because I think we, when we are Christians, we look at other Christians and we believe that somehow they are a finished work, which we're all struggling. All of us have something that we're Thank dealing you. with. And so it's important to understand that as Christians, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you, you fully understand forgiveness. It doesn't mean that you fully understand how to deny your flesh. So people at, are at different levels when it comes to their walk with God. So even when it comes to, comes to Christians, because we've all experienced that church hurt, we have to remember that regardless to who, whoever you may be dealing with, you have to be that vessel that is sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You have to be that light. So we don't ever want to stoop down to that level to where we're paying, you know, evil for evil. We want to repay good for evil because, in, in short, make sure that the light of Christ is able to shine through you regardless to who else, it, you know, you may be dealing with. And also when it comes to people in the world, I, I really, my heart goes out to people in the world because even we know that we should be accountable for the things that we do. But sometimes when you're dealing with family, you're dealing with people that are not saved. They don't understand the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so important to pray for them in hopes that they would come to Jesus and not to hate them because they really don't understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And when it comes again to the church, pray for the church as well, because everyone is at different levels in their walk with God. So I don't want people to get to the point to where they feel just because you are a Christian, you should have known better. Maybe they should have, but still take them to, in prayer to the Lord because we never know what a person is going through, but the Lord knows the heart. So always be that light. Amen. Amen. Very well spoken. Um, I, I was just reminded <laughs> of something that it's just amazing how the Lord will speak to you on something and will literally put you in check. Mm -hmm. I've had that many times. Yes. And um, I remember a few years ago, I was working on a job and I had the manager of this job begin to spew lies on me and I could not understand why would this man do this I mean it was just so crazy and it turned into a situation where there were just multiple people who were basically just you know in line with what this man was doing and they too was also just spewing it was just so out of control just the different things that were being spoken. And I'm like, Lord, I don't understand why this is happening. But at the same time, I knew it was warfare that I was going through because the enemy loves attacking your character. And um, so, you know, I, I was just praying. I'm like, Lord, either you remove me or you remove these people. And one by one, it, these people, the ones who were you know, in cahoots with, uh, with each other, they began to leave the company one by one. And so I knew the Lord was telling me even in that moment that this is where I still want you. It's not your season to leave just yet, but know that I'm allowing this. And so, you know, it took a long time for me to just feel comfortable walking into that company because, you know, in the back of my mind, I was wondering, you know, what, do, what are people thinking about me? Are they believing this stuff, you know? And the Lord really healed me in that and, and basically taught me how to continue to walk with my head held high. You know, don't, don't walk defeated just because you have people, you know, wanting to attack you or attack your character. You know, you still walk and, and know who you are because I know who you are and that's what matters the most. But the thing that the Lord corrected me on was in my prayer to him, I would say, well, Lord, your word says that vengeance belongs to you. So I know that you're gonna deal with these people. And the Lord stopped me right there and he said, no. He said, you don't worry about uh, the vengeance that I will have on those who have hurt you. You focus on loving them and praying mm -hmm. for them. 
-hmm. And I understood what God was telling me because if you're focusing on the vengeance, then you can allow unforgiveness and bitterness to creep into your heart. And God was wanting me to focus on love and praying for them because that will keep my heart free of, you know, unforgiveness or hatred or bitterness coming into my heart. And so when the Lord spoke those words to me, I understood immediately and I thanked him, you know. And so I just want to say also that, yeah, even though his word says vengeance is mine, you know, that's true. God will handle people in the way that he sees fit. But that it's not our job to tell God what he should do or focus on how he's going to get them back for you. Focus on the fact that God brought you out of that situation and focus on continuing to have a heart of compassion and a heart of forgiveness and a heart of love towards those people who have hurt you. Amen. 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 And just to add to that, I just wanted to say, you know, when Christ went to the cross, if he went to the cross, they accused him of being a blasphemer. Mm. So we're talking about character assassination to the fullest. And so the Lord began to deal with my heart to let me know that sometimes people, you, you may not be exonerated in the way that you feel that you should be. And so the Lord told me, he said, you know, the servant is not greater than the master. If he suffered it, you'll have to suffer it. So sometimes we go through things and sometimes we don't see our names clear in situations. And so I just want the people of God to understand how to endure through these situations because things don't always work out the way that you want them to work out. Sometimes people, you know, they'll lie on you, they'll tear down your name, and sometimes you have to live with that. But you have to trust God to know that what, whatever work it is that he's trying to do inside of you, you're going to come forth as that finished work. But I think as Christians, sometimes we have to learn to, to live with character assassinations. Sometimes there are injustices in our lives that you may never see righted. Even when you look at Christ dying on the cross, when you look at his exoneration, this was something that was done by the father when he was raised from the dead. You know, when, when, you know, it was proven when he was seen by many that testified of him after he was raised for the dead, from the dead. All the glory that we see that, you know, came out of what the Lord did for us. But what I'm saying is he was afflicted. The Bible said that he was afflicted while he was on this earth. He was oppressed while he was on this earth. And so as Christians, we have to learn to make Jesus our everything. If you have Jesus, you have everything. He is that freedom. He is that comfort. He is God. But sometimes we have to learn to live with these things. And we have to learn to, to, to let Christ comfort us. Let Christ be your everything. Because it's not always going to turn out the way that you want it to turn out. Amen. And, you know, I think you really hit the nail on the head. When you said that, you know, the Bible does make mention of that, you know, no servant is greater than his master, meaning that, you know, when Christ told us that if we want to follow him, we need to pick up our cross. And, you know, I know for myself that the Lord gave me revelation on that. And that is to say that that cross that you choose to carry is a cross of suffering. It is a lifestyle of suffering mm -hmm. you know when people try to convince you oh when you become a christian you know everything is going to be happy and joyful and just full of bliss no that's not true you know we're going to suffer and and we are afflicted you know all the time some of us daily it seems like whether you're afflicted in your body whether you're afflicted in your relationships with family um you know, the things you may endure on your job, you know, it is something that we have to, you know, be mindful of and, and, and not tell people that this is not what this Christian walk looks like because we're, we're, being, we're doing a disservice to those individuals by not being honest. No, when you are on this walk and if you are truly carrying your cross and following him, that means you're going to have to suffer. 
And so if Christ suffered, if he endured all of these hardships, that means we're also going to have to endure it as well. And, you know, that's why I believe the Bible tells us to count it all joy when we are persecuted for his namesake, because it is a testament that we are truly following Christ because persecution is going to come. You know, yes, I understand that, you know, there are people in other countries that are experiencing harsher and more severe persecution, but there are also other types of persecution that is not, that is not easy. It's very mm -hmm. hard. And so we just have to, you know, understand that, you know, these are some of the things that we can identify ourselves with as, as it relates to, you know, asking the question, why am I going through all of these things? Why does this keep happening to me? You know, those are some of the things that, that we can honestly, you know, answer and say it's because of who I am. It's because I choose to pick up my cross and follow Christ. It's because I choose to not live in the world, you know, and, and not be of the world, you know. Um, so it, it is a, a reminder to us to understand that, you know, when we experience these hardships, it is because of our choice. And I know that going through the things that I've gone through, it's not easy. It has not been easy. But at the end of the day, I will never turn my back and, and, and go back into the world. Mm -hmm. I have completely, you know, surrendered my life to God and I will continue to do whatever it is I have to do to ensure that I'm with him for eternity. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, when we look at Romans 6, you know, it talks about, you know, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized? into his death and you know the lord goes on to say that except a, a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die it cannot live again and this is the death that we are baptized into the the killing of our flesh the killing of our will you know the killing of our pride when we walk with the lord and this is the only way that our spirit thrives is when your flesh dies and so you know as sister veronica was saying you know this is a walk that we have we, we dedicate ourselves, you know, to the Lord. We humble ourselves and we submit ourselves to the Lord and everything that comes with that. And the walk is not pretty. You know, most of the, the Christians that I talk to, we are afflicted because the Lord is doing a work in our life. You know, he'll send you through that fiery furnace of affliction Amen. so that you will come out as that work that the Lord intended you to be. So it's not easy, you know, and I think sometimes people can see the anointing that are that's on certain people they can see you know them prophesying and they look at that and some people might you know glamorize it but you know people the like the lord explained to me the anointing comes through affliction you know it's just like that that uh, olive that's being you know put through the press it's being crushed so that the anointing the oil will come out of it and so when you're walking with the Lord, it's not an easy walk. And I think that we as Christians have to be prepared for that, even especially the new Christians. If, if you're coming to Christ, you have to be prepared to go through some things. But as the Lord says, have we counted the cost? You know, and so once you count that cost and you're willing to follow the Lord, he'll strengthen you to bring you through anything. But we do have to count the cost. Amen. Amen. And I know I like to call those people that you may reference to those who see the anointing on you, those who see the prophetic giftings on you, you know, I, I refer to them as spiritual leeches mm -hmm. because what they do is they will, they will uh, align themselves with those individuals and they will try to suck those people dry because they have not, um, it's because they don't have that anointing. It's because they see on a person's life what they what they want, what they desire, but they're not willing to go through the fire, as Sister Misha mentioned, to get those things. And that's the thing. When you look at um, spiritual gifts, you know, whether you're, you know, um, you have a gift of prophecy or you have a gift of song or, you know, you have um, a gift of being a person who receives dreams and visions, you know, these are gifts that God gives us freely. 
But when you look at the uh, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, those are not given to us. You have to earn those things. You have to work for. You have to go through some things. You have to be tested and tried and and placed in the wilderness. And you know you have to endure and you know really operate in faith to acquire those fruits. And so you know people don't understand that the anointing comes through that labor. And so when you have someone on the outside that sees that anointing on your life and they try to, you know, mingle with you so that they can acquire or, you know, use and abuse to get what they want, you know, Mm -hmm. that is a spiritual leech because they don't want to go through what you went through to get it. And so it's like you have to be very careful of you know, people that you allow in your inner circle, in your inner court, because Mm -hmm. you always have to guard your heart and you have to make sure that you're protecting that inner sanctuary, because there are people that will come in just for the purpose of taking whatever they can from you. So um, I completely agree with Sister Misha is saying, it was such a, a wealth of wisdom that you had in that video. Is there anything else in that video that the Lord gave you speaking on the topic of forgiveness that you would like to bring to the table? Well, I just really want to say what the Lord is leading me to say now is this, that, you know, the Holy Spirit is not something to entertain you. You know, I I look at these videos and I see these churches playing music. I see people dancing, the whole church dancing, people speaking in tongues. But the Lord said that the Holy Spirit gives you power to live right. So you cannot operate. If See, if you have the Holy Spirit, then you will prophesy. The Lord gives you gifts. We work as a body, so all gifts are not meant for you. The Lord gives us different gifts. But when it comes to being a Christian, having that relationship with the Lord, if you have the Holy Spirit, the evidence of that should be living right. Mm, Amen. And so I just wanted to reiterate that to people because I see so many people making entertainment out of the church. So many people that may speak in tongues, you may dance, but the evidence of the Holy Spirit in you is not being seen because you're not living right. So I, I, I wanted to reiterate that because the Lord was putting that on my heart. And when it comes down to us and forgiveness, you know, when we don't want to be a bitter fountain, because this is something that I spoke about in the video, we don't want to be a bitter fountain that, you know, everything that comes out of you is coming from bitterness, because out of the mouth, the, 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 you, know, you know, your tongue, whatever is in you is going to come out, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So if you're bitter on the inside, that's what's going to come out. But your mouth should be a, a, a blessing. It should bless people. It shouldn't be used to curse people. But mm-hmm. what you can't hide what's on the inside of you when it comes down to bitterness. And so it takes a lot. It takes you seeking God. You have to be really serious in your walk with God when it comes down to deliverance because some of us need deliverance. Mm. So you have to be able to get into that closet that went on one time with God. You have to be able to spend that time, dedicate yourself to the Lord and able to be that finished work that the Lord had. Because a lot of people are not spending time with God. You'll listen to the YouTube videos, you'll go to church, you'll listen to the music, but are you really taking that time to spend with God? Because if you do, you wouldn't have to envy other people for the gifts that they have. You wouldn't have to be a spiritual leech. You wouldn't know God for yourself. And so, you know, this is what the Lord is saying to me more than anything, is get into that closet, spend that time with the Lord, get to know him and let him do the work that he has to do within you. Let him tell you what it is that he would have you to do for his kingdom. But in all things, just wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I know the Lord gave me a word, I think it was last year, um, about going into your secret place. And that is that place of, you know, fellowship with you and the Lord. And you really just allow the Lord to just show you, as Sister Misha said, what's on the inside of you. Making sure that you are holding yourself accountable. Making sure that you're not operating 
you know, in anything that is not of God. And so, you know, we just have to, you know, just be mindful of the times that we're living in. I do believe that, you know, we're still here for a reason. And it's because God is still working with us and he's still bringing new people in. And so we need to take advantage of this time that we still have and not so much focus on the, the leaving part, but focus on what can I be doing right now to ensure that when the Lord comes back, he will find me worthy. Amen. Praise God. That is such a beautiful word. And, you know, when I came to the Lord, I was so messed up. I was in so much pain from what people had done to me, the hurt and the abuse that I had suffered unjustly by the hands of people that I loved so much. But on your walk with Christ, we have to understand so many things. The Lord told me, why are you so angry that I took these people out of your life? Because they couldn't go where you're going. And a lot of times, he, like he told me, I'm taking these people out of your life because they would have done more damage to you then had they you know if they had stayed in your life Amen. versus me taking them out of your life now so we have to be okay when people walk away sometimes it's so hard because we can use people for a support system we can lean on people but when you're walking with christ you have to be okay when people walk away and you have to understand that the lord knows what's best because he sees all things we are pre predestined and so if he's taking them out like the lord told me instead of crying you should be praising me and you should be mm -hmm. thanking me for what i saved you from down the road so we have to learn to view things from the lord's point of view instead of viewing it from our own point of view and i praise god because the lord sent me sister veronica when i was in a very terrible place and she has been such an amazing blessed sister to me more than any family that i've ever had so when he when the lord takes people out of your life he will replace them those people with his people that will be a blessing to you instead of being a curse to you so you have to trust in the lord amen and you know i you know i know we talk about this a lot but you know it's it's really amazing how everything came about with you know me and you meeting and um you know, we found each other on YouTube and it was an instantaneous connection. Um, you know, she had, Misha had reached out to me um, and we started talking on the phone. And it's just interesting because, you know, God knows me, you know, I'm very cautious about opening myself up to people just because, you know, not just because I've been hurt in the past, but you know, you just always, like I always tell you guys, you know, you just always have to guard your heart and just make sure that, you know, you're moving slowly when it comes to developing, you know, friendships. Um, but it was such a, uh, a divine connection. You know, I knew instantaneous and I knew, I know me and uh, Sister Misha had also spoke on this early on, how interesting it was how we just clicked like automatically mm -hmm. and um we've been knowing each other for over two years now and it's been an awesome friendship um she's truly been a blessing to me as well and i'm just so appreciative that um the lord has allowed us to do something like this because i do pray that this will be a help to so many of you guys because we need to have real conversations but we also want to feel comfortable you know and feel loved while we're you know having these conversations you know we all need that sister or that brother you know that we can feel comfortable talking to and not feel judged and not feel you know beat down you know because at the end of the day we're all striving or we all should be striving for the same goal, and that is to make it to heaven. Amen. And the Lord wants to love on you, you know. The Lord wants to love on you because in the world, we are we become so fragmented because people come into our lives and they take from us until you are just like completely depleted. But you know, the Lord was saying to me just now, I, I just want to love on my people and I want to restore my people. 
See, but it's going to take time. It's going to take for you to spend that time with the Lord so that he's able to put you back together. So, you know, I, I just, more than anything, out of everything I said, it is, it's, it's so important to get to know the Lord, to spend that time with the Lord and let him restore you because he is the source. He is the vine, you know, and everything that is connected to him will bear fruit. So whatever it is that you're looking for, you, you must be willing to take that time to give to the Lord, to get to know him. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank you all for tuning in to our first segment on Sister Talk. Um, I truly believe this was such a, a great way to start out this show, um, speaking on forgiveness. And if you guys have any topics of conversation that you would like for us to speak on, you can comment below and we will definitely um, talk amongst ourselves and see what we can do on that. Um, we're definitely open um, for any type of topic conversations that you may have. Um, but also know that everything that we do, we will definitely pray on it and make sure it is in the direction that God wants us to go. So, you know, because we, we take this very seriously and we just want to make sure that we're seeking God on, on everything that we're doing on this platform. So we love you all. I pray that this, um, this show has blessed you, has helped you, has encouraged you in some kind of way. And um, to those of you who are currently going through something, I pray that this will give you the strength that you need to, you know, continue to endure and just know that it is so much healthier for you to just forgive that person and love them and, and just truly let the Lord heal you and love on you um as he wants um so before we end i'm gonna let my sister misha say her last final words and then we're going to end the show i just want to say you know that god is love you know sometimes i think that we do ourselves such an injustice not getting to know god in his fullness you know because once we spend that time and we get to know the lord then we become full and there is so much in your life that the Lord wants to do for you. Every hurt, every pain, everywhere that you're lacking, the Lord knows and he sees it. And he wants to come in and he wants to intervene in your life with every situation, things that he said, I know every head, hair that's on your head, things that you don't think the Lord knows, he knows all about it. But please give him the time. And that's all I have to say. Amen. Well, God bless you all. We love you so much. And we will talk to you all soon on Sister Talk. God bless you. Bye. It's Sister Talk with Veronica and Nisha.